Hey everybody, today we're talking about statistical power. Roughly speaking here, we're measuring the ability of a statistical test to detect when an alternative hypothesis is actually true. Let's be a bit more specific. Up till now, we've talked a bunch about alpha, the probability of rejecting H0 when H0 is true. In other words, the probability of a type 1 error. Of course, if we know a p-value, then we can be even a bit more specific with that probability. But fundamentally, this is the right way to understand alpha. So if alpha is the probability of a type 1 error, we define beta to be the probability of a type 2 error, the probability of not rejecting H0 when H0 is false. Now, beta is a bit more of a complicated concept than alpha, so let's explore it a little bit using an example before we get into any of the generalities. Suppose we're testing the claim that the mean starting salary of data scientists, say in the United States, is $97,000 against a one-sided alternative. So here the null hypothesis is going to be that that mean starting salary for the population is $97,000, and the alternative will be that it's greater. Throughout this example, we're going to assume normality for that population with a standard deviation of $8,000. We'll assume a sample size of 10 and a significance level of alpha equals 0.05. Okay, so we're going to do this with critical regions. And um, if you have alpha equals 0.05 uh, for a right-tailed alternative hypothesis, you get a picture like this. So the area to the left is going to be 0.95, and so z star is going to be 1.645. If we go out and get a sample that has a z-score greater than that, that's going to mean we can reject the null hypothesis. So suppose that we later find out that the actual starting salary is $104,000. So what's the probability beta of a type 2 error in that case? In other words, Given that the population mean is $104,000, what's the probability of getting a z-score outside of the rejection region that we just saw? In other words, what's the probability of not rejecting the null hypothesis in this situation where the null hypothesis was false? So that z-star equals 1.645 can be immediately translated into an x-bar value, 101 $101,161.60. So if we go out and get a sample and x bar is less than or equal to that, then H0 is not going to be rejected. So if we're talking about a type 2 error, we're talking about a situation where x bar is less than that. In other words, the probability x bar less than or equal to $101,161.60 given that the population mean is $104,000. So we've got another normal calculation here. Here it is. We're talking about the probability that x bar is less than or equal to $101,161.60 in the distribution that's normal with mean $104,000 and variance $8,000 squared over 10. So we put that into the normal CDF, like a p-norm, for example, in R, and we get about 13.1%. So this is the probability of a type 2 error in this case. Simple, right? Well, not quite. We assumed here that the actual population mean was $104,000. Now, that's something we probably don't generally know. Moreover, if the value had been different, we would have gotten a different probability here. For example, if the true population mean had been $105,000 instead of $104,000, the probability of a type 2 error would have been 6.5%. We summarize this, summarize this by saying beta is a function of mu. So as the population mean changes, the probability of that type 2 error changes as well. Okay, time to define statistical power. K as a function of mu is going to be 1 minus that beta. So this is a function, of course. It represents the probability of rejecting H0 when HA is true. So here we're writing it in a more affirmative way than we did with beta. Um, we're saying, what's the probability of actually detecting um, that alternative hypothesis is true under specific assumptions about that alternative hypothesis. In other words, what the population mean actually is in different situations. So let's continue with exa this example and actually compute it. 
compute it. So the rejection region is completely independent of what the actual population mean is. It depends only on the null hypothesis assumption about the population mean. So we know that we're going to reject the null hypothesis when x bar is greater than 101,000, blah, 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 blah. So to compute k, we know that's 1 minus beta. So it's a complement for that conditional probability. So we're talking about the probability of getting an x bar less than or equal to 101,000, blah, 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 given that the population mean is mu. So the inequality stays the same as we look in the second line. What changes is the normal distribution we're actually in. It's getting shifted to one side or another. Um, and so we get k of mu is this normal CDF function where the population mean mu is actually on the inside. So let's actually see a picture of what this k of mu might look like in this situation. So here I've drawn it. The dotted line is representing the k. It's the difference between 1, this is the line y equals 1, and the phi function, that normal CDF that we saw a minute ago. So let's start way over here at the left at mu equals 97,000. So this is the situation where the population mean is actually equal to the hypothesized population mean. And if you look at this distance here, it happens to be 0.05. So when the actual population mean is equal to the hypothesized population mean under that null hypothesis, the value of k is actually just the alpha, the, the significance level of the test, in this case 0.05. As mu gets further and further away from that hypothesized value in the direction of the test, you're going to see that the power of the test, k, gets larger and larger and larger. And when you get a population mean, a true population mean that is very, very high, then the chances get very, very close to 1 that the null hypothesis will be rejected by that test. So in other words, k gets closer and closer to 1. So these first two bullet points summarize the two points I made in the GeoGebra demonstration. k decreases as mu moves away from mu0 in the direction that, of the test, and when the true population mean coincides with the null hypothesis population mean, then k is just going to be the significance level of the test. So um, what if we change the significance level? What effects does that have on beta? Well, if you're decreasing the probability of a type 1 error, it's not surprising that you're going to increase the probability of a type 2 error. As alpha decreases, the absolute value of z star, the distance of that critical value from z equals 0, um, is going to increase. And so that's going to decrease the critical region. And if you're decreasing that shaded area there, the critical region, then the probability that h naught is not rejected, given any value of mu, any um, true value of mu, is just going to increase. So let's see this in action in this previous example. Suppose in the data scientist's example, we had used a significance level of 0.01. So we are really trying to avoid having a type 1 error. In that case, using critical regions, we would have got a critical z star value of 2.326. And doing the same calculation as before to get x bar, taking the hypothesized population mean, adding the z star plus sigma over the square root of n, we get $102,804.40. That's the highest sample mean for which h naught will not be rejected. So then let's go through and recompute beta when mu has that value. The probability that we do not reject the null hypothesis under those circumstances is going to be the probability that x bar is less than or equal to that value in the normal distribution with that same mean and stands the same standard deviation. Because we haven't changed the standard deviation of the population and we haven't changed the true mean of the population. So we get another p-norm statement, another normal CDF statement, and this time we get about 33%.
So if you remember when alpha was 0.05, we found a probability of about 13%. So there's a, a pretty major difference here.